The process of silaging serves to store food during harvest time and supply it during times of scarcity, conserving quality and palatability at a low cost, which allows for an increase in the number of animals per hectare. This type of feed is used to manage livestock reared through extensive, intensive, or semi-intensive farming. You can do silage in a bag. It consists of packing the chopped material inside a tube and squeezing out the greatest quantity of air possible. They can be bags of different sizes, depending on what fits the farmer's needs. You can also silage in a heap. That consists of piling the chopped material, squeezing out the air, and putting a plastic on top. You can also silage in a bunker or a trench. That consists in making a hole in the ground, depositing the chopped material and covering it with plastic. Those are the three ways of making silage. In this area, we pile up all of the oats to begin the silage process. When silaging oats, after the oats are cut, it's best not to chop it immediately. Instead, it's best to let the material dry a bit to avoid losses through leaching. When you chop up oats for silage, some of the particles will be very small, which means you will see leaching of the crop's initial water content. The cuttings must have a homogeneous size, which will allow for adequate compacting and for the elimination of the greatest quantity possible of oxygen. After chopping comes the packing and compacting of the material. It's at this time that the silage process truly begins. Right now, we're doing this manually at this farm, since the terrain's topography prevents the use of machinery, which would make this process more efficient. This process must be done while trying to eliminate the greatest quantity of air possible, since the presence of any oxygen in the bag aids in the proliferation of fungus and yeast that deteriorate the nutritive value of the oats. At this moment, we proceed with the inoculation of the material that we are packing. We add a mixture of lactic acid bacteria mixed with molasses. These bacteria will accelerate the fermentation process. Lactic acid bacteria are microorganisms that have many applications, one of the main ones being the fermentations of foods such as milk, meat, and vegetables to obtain products such as yogurt, cheese, and silage, among others. At this moment, we are sealing the bag. This must be done by squeezing out the greatest quantity of air possible to avoid damage to the material above the knot. Storage must be done in a place free of rodents. It can be outdoors, but it must always be near to the feedlot. 
being specially careful with the handling of the bags, trying not to break them to avoid damage to the silage. When the fresh material has been compacted and sealed to squeeze out air, the process of ensilage can be divided into four stages. Fase aeróbica. El oxígeno atmosférico presente en la masa vegetal disminuye rápidamente. Fase de fermentación. Esta comienza al producirse un ambiente anaeróbico. Su duración dependerá de las características del material ensilado y de las condiciones en el momento del ensilaje. Fase estable. Mientras se mantenga el ambiente sin aire, ocurren pocos cambios. Fase de deterioro aeróbico. Esta inicia con la apertura del silo y la exposición del ensilaje al aire. The idea is for people to get motivated and for them to realize Oats' excellent results. We can get to work on reducing costs and increasing animal nutrition. Since this makes the rumen develop in a more optimal fashion. Since the animal's processing of vegetable matter will be more efficient, it will be better fed and its physical conditioning will be better. The lactic fermentation performed by the microorganisms give an added value to vegetable products because it improves their nutritional content, digestibility, and palatability. It also allows for management of pastures as a cash crop and not exclusively as a grazing area, which improves the efficiency and profitability of livestock operations, in addition to producing a feed that is natural, ecological, and more economical than concentrate, which makes in silage an excellent alternative for the livestock farmer. The ideal thing for our cattle ranches is to produce the greatest amount of food on our farms, and forage is the cheapest food. That is why we need to look for options to increase our animals' consumption levels and stop depending on concentrates. You can silage not just oats, but any other kind of crop. We can also silage ryegrass, kikuyu, and corn as well. In our case, in the north of Antioquia, we started to do some research on oats, and we began to realize that silaging this kind of forage can give us the best yields in milk production under these alternating winter and summer conditions, where maybe the grasses don't have a very good nutritional quality. The benefits of silage are that in times of scarcity, such as during the summers that affect this northern region, it can provide a food reserve, which will prevent our livestock from losing weight and production. Another benefit is that the material that we silage is at its nutritional peak when it's harvested, and we will preserve those same nutrients for as long as this silage lasts, and we're going to transfer those nutrients to the animal in their peak state. Besides that, when we silage, we are guaranteeing that the forage will be preserved for consumption. We are concentrating the energy and we are concentrating the protein. This way, we will always be ready to face difficult times in our dairy farms. It is important to emphasize that the success of this crop depends on where it's planted and on the way the silage is managed. <laughs>